What's up guys, Foyzy here, and I wanted to do a little video to show you guys my koi pond setup in my yard. I have a couple of ponds in my yard, and I may show some of the other ones in other videos. Don't mind this little, um, little makeshift fence right here. That's just to prevent me stepping on the new grass seeds that we just planted. We actually just redid this whole pond uh, about a month ago, which is the reason I wanted to do this video showing off the pond. And you can see we got a lot of water vegetation, we got some water lettuce, we got some water hyacinths. And then I believe there are about four lily, uh, lily pads in there, four lily pad plants. And as you guys can see, there's a little bit of a hint of greenish brown to the water, but it's very, very healthy right now, very clear. I also put some little sacks of barley hay in there to help with the algae control. And I have a mix of koi fish and comets in here. I have three big guys, and then it's mostly a mix of small comets and baby koi. And then there's a waterfall feature I'm going to turn on in just a moment, but... Some of the dimensions of the pond for anybody who's wondering, this is 15 and a half feet by 10 and a half feet by about two and a half feet deep, and it's approximately 2,300 gallons of water. So the reason I just redid this is because our old liner, it had a seam in it, it had a crease where they had fused two pieces of liner together, I guess. It was kind of stupid how it was set up that way because it then formed a leak all down that crease and we had to redo the whole thing. We had to dig it all up and I took some pictures of the step-by-step -step process. And basically when we took out the old liner we made it a bit deeper and we made the, st um, the sides of the pond steeper too. That way no animals like fisher cats and great blue herons will be able to eat our fish. And the water vegetation helps with that a lot too. It gives them a lot of hiding spots. But basically, I just took out the old liner, I dug it a bit deeper and made it steeper. I then put down the old liner as kind of like an underlayment, and I put down some old rugs as well. And then we put in the new liner, which is 20 mil, and I think it's HDPE material. And then we just filled it up and put rocks around the edges. So overall, the whole project took about a month, maybe a month and a half, and it only cost a couple hundred bucks, and that was the cost of the liner. And I'm very happy with the results. I got a lot, a lot of fish in here, and they do do some schooling, some nice schooling. They kind of stick together, and it looks really good. I got some chairs out here, and I got two. The two big koi in here are about 10 inches. I got one that's a little bit smaller, maybe 6 inches, and he's the one yellow guy in the pond. And then the rest of the fish are all about an inch or two. And those are a mix of comets and some baby koi. And with my comets, when I go to the pet store, I specifically just ask for the ones that have more than one color to them, and I get as many as possible. And I only pay like 10 or 12 cents for each one, and that's why they look so good. Usually the pet store won't have a problem just scooping up the specific ones that have white and orange on them, as opposed to just the plain orange and plain silver ones. And then, along with the fish, I have probably half a dozen to a dozen little baby frogs in here that just found their way in here. I never put any of them in here. And... For the most part, I let them stay. If they get to a good size, I'll relocate them to a different pond somewhere nearby because I have heard stories of bigger frogs eating little comets and baby fish, and I don't want to risk it. I know it's not very common, but I, I don't want big frogs in here really, so I do take the big ones out and I let the little guys stay. So what I would classify as the most difficult part of building this pond was the waterfall setup. And I didn't use any form of an insert, I used a little piece of leftover tarp from the liner and I laid it out and I put some rocks over it very gently. I used ones that weren't sharp so it's not going to pierce it. And then the toughest part was really aligning the rocks in just a way so that the water flows over them and doesn't just go under them. And it's still kind of a work in progress but I do have a good amount of water flowing over that main rock. And I wish I got it on camera but sometimes I'll actually see the little comets trying to swim up that waterfall. They're never actually able to, but it's kind of interesting because they'll just jump at the bottom of the waterfall. And you can probably see it on the camera. I have the pump set up in the deepest part of the pond, which is probably about three to three and a half feet deep. And that pumps up to the waterfall. And I'm going to show you guys my setup in back. So right behind the bushes, I hide all the mechanics and all the filtration systems for this pond. And it's fairly simple. I let the plants do a lot of the work. You can see this pipe leads out from the pond and it leads straight into a sand filter and this was actually an old pool filter that I wasn't using anymore so I used that for the first line of filtration it then goes from there into a UV filter to kill as much bacteria as possible and then it just feeds from the UV filter into the back of the waterfall which is kinda just like a little mound with a tarp over it that I built and then I just built it up with some rocks and it's very simple I, I let the plants do a lot of the filtration the barley hay helps a little bit 
it's all about just finding that right balance and I also use a little bit of algicide as well. I use maybe about a little capful of algicide every week. And for anybody who's wondering, that is an 18 watt UV filter, and I wish I knew what the pump was rated at, but I don't have that information. It was on a sticker on it that got scratched off. And then this little bin over here, I was planning on making like a little gravel filter or a bio filter, but I kind of scrapped that idea because my water's so healthy right now, I really didn't need it. So that pretty much wraps up my little koi pond setup. I wanted to make this video to kind of show you guys what I'm working with here and what I built and inspire any of you who have plans to build your own koi pond setup. It's fairly simple, the only tedious parts are really digging and building the waterfall and setting down rocks if you're going to use rocks. Besides that, it's pretty much just um, hooking up pipes and hooking up pumps and filling it with water and then just maintaining a healthy water balance. And I don't, I don't get as into it as a lot of pond people do who check the pH and they'll check the ammonia and nitrates and all that stuff. I don't do any of that. I like to keep this very very natural and I kind of let it maintain itself. I do add a little bit of algicide in the barley hay and the UV filter, but for the most part I kind of let nature run its course and it, it stays fairly clear. It does have some algae blooms throughout the year where it gets a little bit foggy, but those usually clear up in a week or so. So this is my koi and comet pond setup. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments and what you guys may have built in your yards. And if you guys found this interesting in any way, hit that like button down below. If you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for a lot of great outdoor content just like this. And as always guys, thank you for watching.